it's Mary, and today I'm going to be reviewing a nonfiction book. I'm reviewing Girl, Wash Your Face, which, this little subtitle here is Stop Believing the Lies About Who You Are So You Can Become Who You Were Meant to Be, and it's by Rachel Hollis. This is a Christian published book, Christian author, it's got Jesus sprinkled throughout, and this book was just really great, so I wanted to tell you just a little bit about it. This book is smart, it's funny, it's terribly honest, and it's got some really hard-hitting truths in there. Each chapter is titled with a lie that Rachel, the author, used to believe about herself, and through the chapter you learn why she want, why she believed it, and how she overcame believing that and things that helped her along the way. Many of these lies are lies that women of many ages, most ages, can resonate with. It's everything from uh, I need to be smaller to uh, I'm going to marry Matt Damon to uh, something else will make me happy. This is definitely a book that will give you different insights at every stage of your life. For my life, there were certain chapters that really hit a home run with me. Um, they really hit me hard. And then there were others, a lot of them were her mom-based uh, her mom-based chapters that just didn't quite click with me because I'm not in that stage of my life yet. This is, is a book though that I want to pick up again and again at each different stage of my life because I feel like it's got something new for me to learn from it. Personally, I think this is a book that is for women, not for children. So I do think that this is a book that uh, you don't want to do a Bible study with your middle schoolers with, but it is great maybe starting at age 17, 16, 17 or so, because it does touch on some adult topics um, and throughout the rest of your life. And I think that those are going to be the ages that this book starts really hitting home with people, that it starts bringing the real issues to the table. Although this book is a Christian book, I think you need to take everything it says with a grain of salt and remember to compare it to your own worldview and to what the Bible says, not just take everything for its word because with everything in life, you don't want to just take somebody's word for it um, and believe everything that is told to you just because somebody says it or somebody writes it. You want to line it up with your worldview to see what God says about it. And I think that's very important for this book because it is a Christian book, but it also is a self-help book. And some things will make some of the helpful things that she thought was helpful, you may not have thought was helpful. And so I definitely want to talk about that a little bit more. Overall, I'm going to give this book five out of five stars. I absolutely loved this book. Some of the chapters that didn't quite resonate with me yet were a little slower, but I have a great feeling from hearing people who've bought the book at Books A Million where I work, to uh, friends and family, to uh, my mom's co-workers. All at different stages of their life have just absolutely loved this book and have been raving about it. It's a New York Times bestseller. Um, so I think that you should go pick up a copy and see why it's so amazing for yourself. I don't really know if there's such thing as a spoiler, a non-spoiler portion of a book review for a non-fiction book, but I do want to go into some of, the re some of the different quotes and the stories that really resonated with me or that I have comments about. Um, from this point forward, so if you don't want to be spoiled or you don't want to, you want to read this for yourself, I think that it's wise to stop the video, go read it for yourself, and then come back and see if your opinions match up with mine. Don't just take my opinions as word either. So the first thing I want to talk about is the first chapter, which is Something Else Will Make Me Happy was a well thought out chapter, I thought, but it did have a couple of issues coming from a Christian book kind of standpoint, and that is that it only talked about happiness and it refused to mention joy. 
And that's a really big thing for me because I was always, I have always been taught that happiness is circumstantial and that joy is from the Lord and is forever, even in the hardest and darkest of times. Something that I recently have really discovered for myself. There's a quote in here that says, This is your life. You are meant to be the hero of your own story. This doesn't mean you don't you become selfish. This doesn't mean you discard your faith or quit believing in something greater than yourself. What it means is taking responsibility for your own life and your own happiness. Said another way, a harsher, more likely to get me punched in the face kind of way, if you are unhappy, that's on you. And then she goes on to say that uh, when she says unhappy, she means unhappy, not depressed, and that's a clinical thing, not a uh, not what she's talking about at all. And I do like that she mentioned that she, this doesn't mean to discard your faith, but and she she wants you to choose happiness, and it makes me think of that song um, that says, "And I choose joy, da -da 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 -da, joy." Sorry, I can't sing, but that's the song, and I'll put the link to lyric video or something down below in the doobly-doo, but that was something that was so shocking to me, was that she never mentioned that happiness can be circumstantial and that it is okay to be sad even though it means that you're going to have to pick yourself back up and get to that happy again, but I do think that joy is something, it's joy and peace from the Lord when uh, somebody goes through a hard time, you always give them that verse that uh, the Lord gives you peace beyond all understanding and that's the kind of joy and the faithfulness in the Lord that really helps you stay positive, especially as a Christian. Now if you're not a Christian, I'm not quite sure how that works for you, but as a Christian, I think that that is incredibly important to remember that happiness is circumstantial and that joy is from the Lord and forever. And so even when I have my panic attacks or um, I'm having just a really bad day or uh, my friend dies, it's okay to be sad, but it's that joy and that peace from the Lord that gets you through to the next happy period. And I think that's something that was not as well discussed here. Um, although I do think it is important to choose the moments that you're going to be sad about and not and let some of the, like, the little things run off your back like water, which is a lot coming from me because Lord knows today has not been one of those days I've let that happen, but I think that that is so important and something that really resonated with me and like sparks my thought. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, in the second chapter which is called I'll Start Tomorrow and that is a hundred percent me right here. I mean there's a reason I'm not posting videos every week like I want to. And there's a reason that, that I still drink uncanny amounts of Dr. Pepper. And there's a reason why I haven't been exercising. But then I read this quote from this, from, from this book, this chapter, and it says, If you constantly make and break promises to yourself, you're not making promises at all. You're talking. And isn't that the worst? Because I know that's one of my pet peeves, is when people say they're going to do something and then they never do it. They don't put any effort into it, but they're like, oh yeah, I'm totally that person who does yoga every morning. But then they don't, they don't, they're not actually doing it. And I am totally at fault for that. This is me all the time. But I read this book this week and... For the past week, I have been exercising with my little workout schedule that I had my brother set up for me every week, and I'm every day, and I'm feeling amazing about it. But it has to start somewhere small, where you're like building up to it, and you are doing this every single day, and you keep that promise to yourself. And man, that chapter really just hit me on the nose and was like, "This is you." 
and this is something that you can fix. This is something that you can really work on towards being a better version of you. And I think that's incredibly important, and I just really loved that chapter altogether. So my camera totally died in the middle of this review, so if I'm a little off from where I was mid-sentence a minute ago, that's what happened. There's only one thing that I want to mention about this chapter, is the title. Because the title is The Lie, because all of them start off with The Lie. And then it says, uh, no is the final answer. And I get that she's talking about, like when you read the chapter, you get that she's talking about not taking no for an answer because I really want to work here. Well, no. Well, I'm going to keep applying. I'm going to keep applying. That kind of determination. But <laughs> nowhere in here does she realize that or mention that the only time no is the final answer is when consent is involved. And since that's been such a big topic in the news lately and realizing that uh, people with all of the uh, sexual assault stuff going on in the media and everything, I'm just going to point out that no, she does not mean it like that. So don't give her a hard time about that because Everything else in the chapter is great. She just... The wording was just bad. The wording was bad. So in chapter 12, it's titled, uh, The Lie. I need to make myself smaller. There are some amazing quotes in here. And my size and is not something that I struggle with on a daily basis. I like the way I look and I'm very, and I am working harder to keep myself healthy and everything, but for the most part that's not something that I'm struggling with. However, there were some amazing quotes in here that really stood out to me on other levels. The first one was you can't blame the past for the things that went wrong if you aren't also willing to be thankful for the things that went right. And that's incredibly important for me because um, I've had some ups and downs this past year and I can't say that I can't be think I can't be I can't blame the things in the past for things that went wrong when something good did come out of it even though it didn't look like that in the moment. Or when um, God obviously has put me in a specific circumstance that I'm not exactly happy with, but he's used it for his good. And I think that's really important to keep in perspective. And she does such a much better job at explaining that when you get the full context of the story and everything. Here, I'll just read the little paragraph so that you understand. It says, um, Little girl, that's what he called me, and not as an endearment. Little girl, you have no clue what you're talking about. Little girl, the, world, the real world is going to eat you alive. Little girl, you better grow up quick. Little girl became an expletive. I hated when he called me that but never truly understood how it affected me before that day at the conference. And not just negatively, but positively as well. I wouldn't be who I am if it were not for my childhood. I wouldn't be where I am without the work ethic instilled in me by my father. The same man who praised my achievement might have unintentionally taught me to chase it a bit too much. But you can't blame the past for the things that went wrong if you also aren't willing to be thankful for the things that went right. And I think that's very important. Um, and that was just like a really big deal, especially when it tied into this other stuff. Um, also at the conference that she's talking about. Um, this is what occurred to me at the conference that day. I cannot continue to live as half of myself simply because 
it's hard for others to handle all of me. And I have this little note on the side because this is the copy of the book that I'm sending to a friend. And it says, um, I know I can be a lot to take in all at once, but I never ever want to live as half of myself. It's way too exhausting. I just want to be me. And in the real world, being a Christian makes others uncomfortable. But God didn't sacrifice everything for me to only be his follower half of the time. And that's something that I constantly have to remind myself of. Um, and then on the other page it says, It makes me wonder how many women are walking around living, half, living in half their personality and in doing so denying who their creator made them to be. Because the world always has this idea of what you're supposed to be, how your hair is supposed to look, how you're supposed to do your makeup, um, how you're supposed to dress and act, and who you're supposed to be. And every day you get that push at you through the magazines and the media, and that's not who God intended us to be. And it's incredibly important that we remember that. And I want to live as myself 100%. And I don't want to ever lose sight of that. And I know that sometimes, some days, I will. But it's so incredibly important to be told, God made you this way for a reason. And he says that you are beautifully and wonderfully made in his image. That's amazing and astounding. And the way that she put it just really sparked that in me again. And at the end of the chapter, same chapter, it says, don't let someone else's opinion of you determine your worth. Don't miss out on the chance to live the life of incredible possibility in front of you. I have to sneeze. I feel like I need to sneeze. And I think that's where the little subtitle here, the stop believing the lies about who you are so you can become who you are meant to be really came into focus for me for this book. And I think that's where it's really going to start hitting a lot of people. There were so much highlightable words in this, so many Instagrammable phrases and ones that actually meant something. And hopefully through the people who read this start to make a little bit of a difference. Now I've got two more things to talk about and I'll make it quick. <sighs> chapter 13 I think was one of my favorite chapters, which was the lie, I'm going to marry Matt Damon, which at my age, in this point in my life, that title is by far the funniest because I don't think there isn't a girl out there who is like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and then says, Chris Hemsworth, am I right? Tom Hiddleston, am I right? And being like, I'm gonna marry them someday. And it doesn't, or says some other famous person, some other, have has that fantasy built up inside them. It could be a YouTuber or um, even like a fictional character on television, but and they're like, I'm going to marry him. That is my new husband. He is my husband. He just doesn't know it yet. And so that was just super relatable for me. And the fact that she describes how much she actually pursued this crazy dream, this crazy fantasy of marrying Matt Damon someday, whom she obviously did not marry, um, was what pushed her to get out of her comfort zone and what pushed her to get that job that she really wanted working at uh, Miramax Studios. Did I say that right? Yes. Um, and moving to LA and everything and everything like that. And there's this amazing sentence here and it says, I think my ability to imagine my dreams in intricate detail is one of the biggest reasons I have been able to achieve them. And I think that's one of my favorite sentences in this entire book because I am su I have such 
a vivid imagination. I always have a plan. I know exactly what I want to do in life. I know that person that I want to be someday. And I'm actively working towards to being that person. And I know I'm going to fall. And I know that that plan will change. That plan has changed many times. And God will probably step in and say, that's not exactly the way I wanted you to go. So I'm going to have to, you know, adjust the plan. But the fact that I have that plan is, one, just a little bit of a security blanket. And two, it keeps me moving forward even when I don't know where God's leading me right now. And that's so important that my imagination can help me drive help me get that drive to achieve my dreams and the fact that somebody else sees that too and could actually put it into words was just fantastic to me um, but I also have this nice little blurb paragraph here that I have written because I wanted to point out a few things from that chapter and in that chapter she's talking about chasing fame and fortune and success and it's not that those aren't okay to chase and to fantasize about but they aren't inherently the christian things that god wants us to chase god wants us to chase him and sometimes god's plan for our lives isn't going to include fame and fortune but when we get to heaven that success that for, that following god will be that success and I just, I put down here, I was like, remember that God loves you and has a plan for you. That sometimes, and some, so sometimes those things just aren't in his plan. And I know that he doesn't just put up his plan on a bulletin board for you to see. So it's okay to make a plan for yourself. Just remember to make it flexible. There were so many chapters in here that I'm not even discussing, but I loved um, the last thing that I have here is um, this final paragraph, which I think is so empowering. It's like an amazing conclusion sentence, especially for a self-help book. It's like something that makes you want to get out there and do it. This is, girl, get a hold of your life. Stop medicating, stop hiding out, stop being afraid, stop giving away pieces of yourself, stop saying you can't do it. Stop the negative self-talk, stop abusing your body, stop putting it off for tomorrow, or Monday, or the next year. Stop crying about what happened and take control of what happens next. Get up right now. Rise up from where you've been, scrub away the tears and the pain of yesterday, and start again. Girl, wash your face. I was just so much, I was so waiting for when the wash your face part would come into play. And I kept thinking, okay, I know that I saw it in here or on Facebook and somebody highlighted it or something. And I was getting to the point where they were, I was thinking, okay what does the girl wash your face mean and it means a fresh start and I think that's incredibly important because it's not saying girl you're wearing too much makeup wash your face and I think a lot of people really do need to be told that sometimes but I also know that instead of her using that as saying girl wash your face her using this is your fresh start this is your next step, this is your step one, was just phenomenal, and I love the way that she closed the book out with that. So go pick up your own copy of Girl Wash Your Face, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the doobly-doo, and I really hope you get as much out of this book as I did. Um, thanks for watching this video, if you liked it, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button to um, get notified every time I make new videos and you can click that little bell so that you get a little notification whenever one goes up. And yeah, that's about it. I love you. God loves you. Y'all have a great day. Bye!